Welcome to the second installment of the QBCC's Home Insurance Scheme video series, where we unpack the topic of insurance related to QBCC's Home Warranty Scheme. Today we delve further into who pays home warranty insurance, when this needs to be paid, calculating how much to pay using the premium tables located on the QBCC website, and how to make the actual payment. You'll also notice that we occasionally reference information contained on the QBCC website during this presentation. For your convenience, we've included all relevant website links directly below this video in YouTube. Okay, let's get straight into it. What work requires a policy? As explained in video one in this series, the principal contractor must take out home warranty insurance on the homeowner's behalf for all insurable residential construction work where the value of the work is more than $3,300 and that includes cost of materials even if you didn't provide them, labour and GST. Some of the common exclusions include work on a residential building higher than three storeys, not including a car park, including work in an apartment in such a building. So bodies, corporate and apartment owners need to make note of this. It's also not available for commercial building work or work on a registered retirement village. The list of what is considered residential construction work is quite long, so we aren't going to go through them. Please refer to the link below the video for more information. Who pays the premium? As we covered briefly in video one, if you're the licensed contractor, often called the principal contractor, who enters into a contract with a homeowner to carry out building or renovation work, you're responsible for collecting the insurance premium from the homeowner and paying this to the QBCC on behalf of the homeowner. Depending on the type of residential construction work being carried out, the principal contractor could be either a builder, for example, when constructing a new home, or a trade contractor. For example, a cabinet maker installing new kitchen cabinets in an existing home. What if you are just subcontracting on a project? If you are a subcontractor to a principal contractor, you won't need to pay the insurance premium. In this scenario, the principal contractor bears responsibility for lodging one insurance premium, which covers all insurable work outlined under the contract with the homeowner. What if you are contracting to an owner builder? It should be noted that an insurance premium is also not payable for work being performed for an owner builder who has been issued an approved owner builder permit from the QBCC. If the homeowner has not been issued an approved owner builder permit from the QBCC, or if the owner builder permit issued does not cover the work you have been asked to undertake, you may be obliged to pay the insurance premium for any work you undertake for the homeowner. Before you start, check the owner has an owner builder permit and the permit covers the work in question. If you're in any doubt as to whether an insurance premium should be paid or not, if faced with such circumstances, please contact QBCC online or on 139 333 and one of our friendly staff will be more than happy to provide you with some guidance. When the premium should be paid. The premium must be paid either within 10 business days from entering into a contract or before work starts, whichever occurs earlier. Ensure you include the insurance premium amount in the homeowner's deposit. Please note, the deposit requested can only be up to the maximum allowable by law and should include the cost of the insurance premium as part of the quoted deposit amount. Generally, if the cost of your building work is $20,000 or more, the maximum deposit allowed is 5% of the total contract price, and that includes labor, materials, and GST. And if the contract price is between $3,300 and $19,999, the maximum deposit is 10%. When home warranty insurance cover starts. Insurance cover through the Queensland Home Warranty Scheme starts from whichever of these dates occurs earliest. The premium is paid, the contract is signed, or work commences. Calculating insurable value. The insurable value or market value of the work includes the cost of any associated work included in the contract. 
examples of such associated works may be landscaping, driveways, fences, pool fences, retaining walls, air conditioning, hot water systems, security doors and grills. It should be noted this is not a complete list of associated works and these items are just examples. For a comprehensive list, please refer to the QBCC website or, if in doubt, please contact QBCC for assistance. You can calculate the insurable value by adding together the value of materials, even if these are being supplied by others, labour, which includes the cost of the QLEAVE levy for projects valued at more than $150,000 excluding GST, and GST. And don't forget, the insurable value excludes the QBCC insurance premium amount. Calculating premiums for different types of work. Premium tables. Once you know the insurable value of the work, you can match this to the premium amount by looking at the relevant insurance premium table. Once again, if you look below this video, you'll find links to take you directly to these tables which include the premium table for new home construction, the premium table for alterations, which should be referred to for most other works, including renovating a home, altering a home, repairing a home, extending a home, building a related roofed building, for example, a shed or a carport, building a swimming pool. And there's also a premium table for optional additional cover. Consumers who wish to obtain optional additional cover must pay the additional insurance premium for this cover to QBCC by the earlier of 30 business days, after the date of the contract or before the work starts. Once the principal contractor has paid the compulsory insurance premium, the homeowner can choose to pay an additional optional premium to increase their cover. The homeowner arranges to pay this premium directly to the QBCC. So how do I pay the insurance premium? Once you've calculated the insurable value of the work, and use the appropriate premium table to calculate the premium owing, you are almost ready to contact QBCC to make the payment. In addition to the insurable value of the work and the premium amount owing, please ensure you have all of the following information close at hand when making your payment. The homeowner's name, postal address, phone number and email address. Remember check with the homeowner that this is an email address they check regularly. Details of where the work is being performed, including lot number, registered plan number, and street address. Also, description of the work, for example, new build or alterations. Number of stories and number of units, if applicable. And the date of the contract. Right, now you're ready to make your payment. And you can do this through the following channels. Online via your MyQBCC account or calling our friendly staff on 139 333. Don't forget the premium needs to be paid within 10 business days of contract or before work starts, whichever is the earlier. Please check the notice of cover details carefully. If you find any errors, please contact us immediately to seek amendment of the document. If the residential construction work you are undertaking requires building approval, you'll need to provide the notice of cover to your certifier so they can issue the approval and approved plans. We'll also send the homeowner a tax invoice, a link to our product disclosure booklet, link to instructions for how to pay for optional additional cover should they wish to do so. Thanks for watching this installment of our video series. Don't forget to tune in to the next video in the series which will address how to manage the insurance policy once you've taken this out. We look forward to seeing you there.